it's the next level. So what, they're all starving, but one of them's got a fucking cell phone? Uh, you know, I really wish you had cleared this with me before you went over there. Oh, Jesus Christ, I don't have to clear shit with you, Ashley. I saw a chance for an easy win and I took it. How many views? Well, they posted last night. We scrubbed it 17 minutes later, but that's forever. And there's been some, some blowback. Blowback. Fine, fine, fine. So at a, I'm down a, a point, point and a half, two. Back to the show, Pamela. I'm Mark, and I'm Steve. And <laughs> <laughs> no, it just there's always that moment right at the beginning when you're like, oh, when is this gonna? You know, <laughs> it's funny. <laughs> it's funny, but uh, uh, but go ahead, give our give our spiel so everybody knows what we're what we got going on. Sure, you want me to do it. Well, no, no. Well, basically, this is a spoiler filled up podcast on the second season of the amazon primes the boys we have watched the whole season two and all the episodes within and we are now discussing these episodes from the point of view or that point of view as it were if you have not watched all the second season of the boys why are you here go back watch the whole second season and then tell us what you thought of any of the individual episodes going forward so basically just go watch it yeah, if you, it, yeah. Uh, don't come don't 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 come here and then start complaining saying I didn't watch it but you were already spoiled. <laughs> <laughs> this uh this episode is about season 2 episode 5 we got to go now and uh, the synopsis uh, which is a little confusing from IMDb but I'm going to read it the way they they typed it up. Yeah. Uh, Butcher has no more intentions to fight with Soups, but Black Noir traced his location and found him. What will he do now? Soups are shooting or shooting a film named hashtag Dawn of the Seven. Homelander is doing what Stormfront told him to do. It, it, kind of a, an interesting sort of synopsis. It's funny that this title, this uh, this uh, is it uh, is it Emerson Lake? No, is yeah, it's uh, it's Emerson Lake and Palmer, not uh, the the We Gotta Go Now song. Yeah. Right. And I was just watching Jaws where they sing that where, you know, Dreyfus uh, Shaw sing that whole uh, had a little drink. <laughs> you <know>? Yeah. <laughs> so I thought that was kind of interesting that it was coming up so prevalently here in the last few minutes. What are your general thoughts about this episode here? We got to go now, Mark. Well, honestly, it was a lot eye opening all about Billy at certain points and not just Billy, but also Homelander stormfront in their relationship and then yeah and everything else in between you know the the making of the movie mm -hmm. <laughs> of the about the seven that was pretty yeah. cool so yeah and i i really enjoyed it and, and watched it a couple of times here for this watch and i remember enjoying it the first time i watched it there's a lot of little things in it that are, are really super cool but there's a lot of big moments that we get that really move yeah move the story along you know, and so that's it's really interesting that this here in the middle of the season kind of they gave us this episode that that gives us a lot of information. There's a lot of subtle little things going on that you might not notice the first time around. So it's kind of nice watching it again. Yeah. And we should go on to our top fives. Absolutely. Kind of man who calls out injustice when he sees it. Stop. Hey, dude, that's not cool. So I started last week. I think you should go this week. I believe so. Um, I just want to talk a little bit about the, the, the scenes that they're filming, these Dawn of the Seven movie. I uh, love seeing Greg Grunberg in this. It was so cool to see yeah. him. Of course, I've been a fan of his ever since Alias and everything else he's done from his, his brief cameo on Lost. I love the little comment about the Joss Rewhite quote, you know, because that's one of the things that Joss Whedon did a lot, like in the 90s. And I think he did a lot of rewrites of, of movies and stuff. So that was kind of cool homelander was kind of acting like the director there I, i'm not sure if he was actually directing or if it was just maybe that scene with mave and and the girl because we don't see him subsequently in the other scenes when they're shooting so it may have just been that particular one you know he isn't even on set for the the whole a train 
monologue. And uh, I love that A-Train got to say the name of the movie within <laughs> within yeah. the movie. It, yeah. It's always kind of fun when you, <laughs> when you see that. you know. And then, of course, the whole Starlight and Stormfront thing when they're talking, when their scene ends to where you kind of get this idea that Starlight, and we talked about this, I think, before, she's kind of idolizing Stormfront in a little bit, looking up into her as a mentor maybe, but that's definitely going to change as the, well, this episode, it changes dramatically. Oh, yeah, that that's a big, huge difference between this episode or past episodes and mm -hmm. going forward too because i think it was eye-opening for annie to see what's going on with stormfront too mm -hmm. especially how stormfront treats her and yeah. you know you were just speaking about homelander so my number five would be homelander in the beginning you know taking care of the quote-unquote super villain in africa he kills that guy and makes fun of him before he actually kills him and then causes uh, another kid to die because of the laser from his eyes that went through the supervillain mm -hmm. homelander is starting to basically slip you know with trying to keep his craziness away from the public now and you know as a result ashley is getting even more stressed about dealing with him and we see that a lot within this yeah episode. for sure for sure homelander is definitely that whole scene in that hallway there that corridor or whatever where he's just watching the video over and over again and he, he can't he can't handle what's happening when he went to that rally that the congressman was doing and he the first time i watched this way back when and he lasered the crowd like i was actually fooled i thought did he actually just do that you yeah. know but it's definitely one of those things that when you when you have an extreme narcissist with control issues and he suddenly starts to lose his grip he's definitely going to spiral out so yeah. yeah and that's actually a cool thing that happens so we get a closer look into his mind of what, mm -hmm. how he sees things too within that scene too, if you yeah, look about it. Exactly. So my number four is, I just, I love kind of the way the editing is on this show. Sometimes it does a really good job. We have that whole scene with the deep and his wife and, and they're on the couch and they're talking to Katie Couric. And uh, I think it's Katie Couric. And uh, yeah. they, as the camera kind of pans away or kind of backs up, it smoothly edits right into the scene of them on the TV in that little restaurant or whatever where Kamiko goes and attacks those guys. And so I thought that was really, really cool. That uh, and, and that whole fight scene with her is just amazing. Everything she does, I think you've got it in your notes about the face pulling off. Oh, yeah. And she, she buries one of the guy's gun, like, through his eye. It was just <laughs> gruesome. You know, Frenchie comes in, he sees the face on the floor. And uh, so, yeah, just, just crazy stuff. Exactly. And that would lead me to my number four, which would be the filming scenes with the the Seven movie itself. Mm -hmm. the, you know, the forced scene about Maeve being gay with the other actress there. That that was a little bit, you know, pushing it. And you could see how Maeve was not really dealing with it mm -hmm. very well, you know. And then Annie and Stormfront's little talk about Annie getting too close to her. Mm -hmm. You know, Stormfront gets that, like, uh hello excuse me you're you're in my area you're getting a little bit too attachy what, what's with the touchy-feely thing you yeah, know yeah and then stormfront brings annie's mother to the set and using her to decry uh, i guess to convince annie to do what she wants you know uses annie's mother to try to manipulate you know her you know uh, yeah I'm, I'm not sure if that was like a subtle kind of menacing kind of thing from her or what that was all because it, it really and i i, I kind of know what i said earlier about starlight kind of looking up to stormfront but at the same time we have this very sarcastic moment when the ad or whoever this guy is says you know oh act like you actually like each other and then starlight kind of mockingly or sarcastically says oh oh we have to like each other you know and yeah it, it was it was a little weird i i now that i go back i kind of backtrack a little bit it was kind of like it was pushed on them but and, yeah and, and and her i maybe she had doubts at that point but i think those doubts were kind of corrupted at that point when stormfront brought you know annie's mom mm -hmm. right to starlight's yeah. face and then they get in this whole discussion about her personal life and you could see that annie was not having anything to do with it yeah yeah i think i had some of this in my notes as well is just this whole thing of Stormfront kind of talking about personal stuff with Annie's mom and telling her like, well, she, everybody else was doing it with the whole V thing and her mom kind of trying to, I think it might be later in my notes or somewhere, but yeah, it was an interesting scene that was really kind of, kind of different. So yeah, which that leads right into my number three, which is Aya Cash. 
as Stormfront. She's doing really great. And, and like I said before, her subtle kind of way of playing menace is just amazing. Cause you know, like you just said, she brings Annie's mom to the, to the set. Then she has that discussion with a train where a train, you, you know, it's a train. You can really see that his character is starting to see and starting to kind of figure her out because she makes some comments that he can definitely tell are racist. Oh yeah. Comments. You know, and so as soon as, and he realizes that, and so I, I think we're going to see his arc through the season kind of progress as as he starts to figure out what Stormfront's, what's going on with Stormfront, what she's really about. But I really like, I mean, Aya Cash is, like I said, she's just doing really, really well at this part, and uh, amazingly how she's she's hiding the fact that I'm sure she was aware of the character, how old the character actually was during filming, or I, I would assume she was she was aware of it early on they didn't just reveal that to her later but yeah she's doing a really good job oh yeah definitely yeah and i think she enjoys playing that character too on occasion because mm -hmm. from what i've seen in interviews and for what they were promoting for next season too it seems like yeah. she was enjoying it mm -hmm. and my number three would be you know with the whole chase scene with kimiko and mm -hmm. we were talking about that restaurant and everything how she just peels that guy's face off <sighs> in the russian you know restaurant or bar and just kills all those guys, you know, and then we see Frenchie still following her to make sure that she's all right and to help her. But Frenchie finding that Kimiko is taking money for hits on mobs. Mm -hmm. The scene in the church was really tough to watch because, you know, he just flat out tells her, just go be a monster. Yeah. As if we see Frenchie's heart breaking right in front of us, too. Yeah. And, and that character that she was meeting in the church was it me or was it, it did that remind you of the the girl in the opening scene that Maeve saves on set oh it, a little bit but that was that was Cherie yeah. right the girl that he's been kind of on and off with throughout yes the two seasons right yeah yeah kind of she did look a little bit she didn't have that she didn't have that color in her hair though no no so, she didn't but it just so, reminded but, me so much of it though yeah yeah I that's just interesting yeah so my number two is it's kind of a quick one, but it's just when when Homelander does come to that rally where Congresswoman Newman is and she's just staring at his head the whole time there. And now we know because we know that she's the person who's doing the head popping. Mm. I saw a YouTube video that kind of really focused in on this, her staring at his head that uh, kind of maybe she has to have line of sight kind of thing. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure about that that issue but it was definitely she was very much staring at him throughout that whole time as he walks out into the crowd and then mm. as he comes back up onto the stage and you really wonder if she was just waiting for him to say the wrong thing that just to pop her, his head <laughs> yeah <laughs> you know if she would have been able to i don't know i mean we we know that she can do it but we haven't seen her kill a soup yet so we don't know well that would have been way too obvious in front of a big huge crowd I'm like sure, that yeah. you know I mean, it would have been it, yeah yeah it, it's probably that one of those things i'm like i really hate you i want to really pop your head mm -hmm. and i know but what I you can't. stand for yeah. but i can't you know <laughs> yeah yeah exactly exactly yeah and like i said we don't know about this whole like i said this the video that i watched the guy kind of stressed that he thought she had to have line of sight on the person because you know in the last episode she's going to pop that guy's head she's standing you know outside his whatever compound or whatever it is but i i'm not sure about that because we don't know where she was when rainer when rainer was popped you mm -hmm. know Very so true. and so it's it's we're gonna find out more about her we got to find out more about her next season i'm sure i hope so because it's an interesting character all all mm -hmm. together because literally she's been salt and peppered throughout the whole season Mm -hmm. But we really don't see her as like a major player, but until we realize who it is at the very end mm -hmm. of the yeah, we don't. Season. It really is. She's very subtly throughout, not every episode, like every, not even every other episode, like every third episode or so, she's kind of, she, she just makes an appearance and you kind of go, oh yeah, oh yeah, about her. that's her, yeah. And my number two, well, that would be Black Noir at Billy's house, mm -hmm. oh, Billy's aunt's house, I should say. And, you know, they escape by calling the fire department about mm -hmm. a gas leak. They use it as a, a, a good distraction and, you know, and uh, the cool thing is you get to see Billy and he sees Black Noir from the car when he was trying to leave and just abandon everybody. But he sees it in his, uh, I think his side view mirror and just looks up. Yeah, and it and, took me, it took me several times watching this to actually catch Black Noir on that, that, that rooftop. Yeah. And he comes back into the building and I had to like, I had to wrap my brain around this whole plan and I finally figured out what they were 
what they were actually doing by calling the fire department in was they were delaying Black Noir getting into the house. They didn't call the fire department as a distraction for them to escape because they knew that he could catch up to them. They, mm. they called in the fire department to to delay him long enough for them to set those booby traps around yeah. around the house. Is what it took me like it took me every like three times three or four times of watching this episode to figure out that's what they were doing. Cause I was like, why did they, if they, if they were using the fire department as a, as a distraction to escape, why didn't they escape? Why did they stay in the house? And then I figured out that, Oh no, they were just using, they were using it to delay him so that he, he wouldn't come into the house until they had time to set all these traps. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Because he did say uh, mother's milk mentions that he can run faster than a car. So yeah, that is true. And I would love to see that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it would have been interesting. That leads right into my number one, which is the fight with with uh, Black Noir in the house. And I'm really surprised that any of them were able to survive that. I mean, Mother's Milk gets a knife thrown into his chest. Yeah. And I guess it didn't go in, you know, Black Noir, for whatever reason, didn't throw it deep enough to kill him. You know, and he's advancing on Huey when when Billy gives kind of his bluff about Homelander and having pictures or proof that Homelander has a kid out there and that he raped his wife. You know, so it's it's really interesting that whole just that whole thing when when they're kind of down there in the bottom. It's it's really a tense moment because they're in that basement and mm -hmm. they can hear the explosions going off and they hear him walking and then that gas grenade comes in and they have to to flee out of the taffy room there. You know, <laughs> so I, I love it. He's all covered in shrapnel and you know he's got all this stuff sticking out of him. So they they suddenly realize he's got this healing factor if they didn't know about it before. I mean, he nah. shoots him through his like he puts his hand over the gun barrel yeah huey just pulls the trigger shoots right through his hand but very much like the crow <laughs> but yeah, he doesn't exactly. scream out you exactly. know exactly <laughs> yeah yeah and so i i was that whole fight was just really fun to watch every time i i watched it yep and my number one mm -hmm. well that would be victoria's speech in the city you know stormlander showing up you already mentioned some of this mm -hmm. and then we see what is basically in stormlander's head at that mm -hmm. point you know with Home, him homelander homelander yeah uh, not Stormfront. <laughs> yeah, that's their that's their that's their their ship name, Stormlander. It's, Stormlander. <laughs> that's the ship name for. Stormlander. And I actually wrote <laughs> Stormlander too, which is pretty funny. So, all right, cool, that works out. We'll make it their ship name. Yeah. Yeah, we'll just ship them. You know, like Carol and Daryl. It's like, uh, well, no, exactly. it's not Daryl. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, you know, him blasting everyone with you know his eyes. He just makes mm -hmm. it worse with what he's saying, though. Not just what in, is in his head. He says sometimes these things just happen. He he makes Ashley pull more hair out of her head with mm -hmm. you know the stress that he's putting her through. So we start to see the more of Ashley just like getting crazed about how Storm yeah you know, yeah we'll say it's Stormlander is <laughs> actually creating you know Homelander is doing with people. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah, and that ending scene with Homelander and Stormfront, Oof. well, Stormlander at this point, <laughs> yeah, and getting their super jollies off, <laughs> exactly, and that was a bit crazy too because uh, she kept asking for, yeah, yes, it hurts, it hurts. He's like, what? You want me to stop? She goes, no. I guess she actually gets to feel if it hurts a little bit, and she doesn't really feel much. Yeah, that's that whole S and M thing, I guess. I don't know. I'm I'm not into that. I'm not into. I don't know, but <laughs> no, that that was really wacky but we do find out later on you know with their little relationship of who he is of who homelander is who she is and where this relationship is basically going and why she is there so you mm -hmm. know this is like the beginning of what we're we're starting to see with those two and that was what was pretty cool about this episode yeah yeah exactly so we both got quite a few notes. I'm looking at mine, seeing what's the kind of the highlights that's interesting. Why don't you go ahead and go first and what you want to give? Well, in the very beginning of the episode, it's before the, the credits come down. Billy in the bar with the live hardcore mm -hmm. rock music that's out there. You know, he takes advantage of lashing out and beating up a concert goer and then gets beat up, which I guess he really needed, mm -hmm. you know. And, you know, Homelander and what did I write? But the frozen peas. He puts the frozen peas on his on his head. Where oh, he's got yeah, the, where yeah, he's yeah. He, yeah, uh, the peas. I'm, I'm like, what? I'm like, what I was trying I to figure that out, too, what you wrote there. Yeah, it was the frozen peas. But we get to see, you know, all, all the, mar the marketing. Yeah, all, yeah, yeah. All that stuff in the in with with the whole uh, what was it? Starlight like uh, 
skin cream or something like that. So yeah, and yeah. also leads into the thought of what Judy, his aunt, states about the brother Lenny that mm -hmm. Billy had, and how he used to take care of Lenny, and basically, I guess Lenny used to get beat up or abused in some way from people. Yeah, and... we're gonna get more. We're gonna get more about him, I think, in the next couple of episodes when we when we meet Billy's parents and stuff. Yeah, and uh, and I think that had to be a result of what we learned about Billy from yeah. Judy because it seemed like it brought him back to the way he felt too. But yeah, well, you you had a couple others too, right? Yeah, yeah, I've got a few here. The the, the flash drive that they have in the movie is shaped like the the Vought V. I thought that was kind of cool. Oh, cool. And then did we see the dog in season one? I know they talked about the dog, and I know like the guys on TV podcast industries talked about the dog. From the comic books, but I don't remember if we actually saw the dog in season one or not. Do you remember? I don't remember seeing a dog, no. Okay. I didn't think so. I just – I think the, the guys on TV podcast industries talked about it so much that I was just aware of this dog, the terror. And and I think – you know, so – but I thought that was interesting. Yep. And another point would be – or in my notes would be the, the moments with Billy and his aunt. Mm -hmm. You know, Huey's compared to – I already stated it, you know, to someone that Billy and his aunt know or, you know, Billy's brother being called Lenny. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it, it goes into that whole information I just said before about Lenny and the fact that, of all things, Huey just – you know, it just reminded Judy about Lenny itself. Right, and she's comparing Huey to Lenny and, and making that comparison. So, yeah. Meanwhile, also we got that whole uh, canary in a coal mine. Yeah. And Mother's yeah. Milk brings that up too, especially when Huey got off the phone with, with Billy in the very beginning just after the bar and everything. Mm -hmm. And, you know, Mother's Milk is like, what did he say? I need to know word for word what he yeah. had said. So basically, you know, Mother's Milk was feeling that, you know, and that's why they were sent off in their journey to find Billy because mm -hmm. he well, was Well, that's concerned. why he knew where, that's why he knew where Billy was because he knew that the, the dog toy, Huey heard the dog toy squeak and so yeah. he knew he was going to his dog. Let's see, i got a few that we haven't already discussed. We've discussed some of that. The return of Malcolm Bennett. I thought this was really, this huh. was really curious because, you know, we saw him in Preacher. If, uh, if anybody's a fan of the show Timeless, he was in that show as well but wasn't he the guy in like the the little group therapy scene that had lost his junk to a soup in I season so. one and so now he's back working for Vought and working for the soups i i'm i was a little confused by the character i didn't go back and try to rewatch the episode he was in uh, in season one but uh but that just it was curious of me to see him there yeah it was pretty cool though that we finally you know we did get to see him again Mm -hmm. The next one would be the conversation with Terror the Dog with Billy outside <laughs> about it all being now about Metamucil and removing ticks <laughs> as you get older. I guess that's because it's his view of looking at a like kind of retirement. He retirement was, he was home. talking about, you know, going, get, getting out of the stopping fighting soups like we talked about in the synopsis. He was going to just try to disappear out of the picture and he was like so that was what retirement life for him was yeah it's his view of what would be in uh, being retired yep mm -hmm. and billy's aunt you know jody stating huey to stop playing with terry's <laughs> toy which is yeah. his fuck pig yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah exactly and then you exactly. can see l l the look on you he's just like Ew, ew. <laughs> <laughs> yeah billy was going to sacrifice himself twice to black nar first he was going to he was he told them he was just going to walk out of the house before they set all the, the booby traps. Yes. He was just going to walk out because he's just like, well, he's after me. So I'll just go out there and confront him while you guys escape. And then that's that that moment when Huey and Mother's Milk kind of when he looks at Huey and he says, well, I can move you. And Mother's Milk kind of comes out and goes, well, can you move me also? Yeah. And, then, and then he does the same thing there at the end during that fight when he shuts the door on him and tells them to escape that he was going to fight back nor by himself but then of course we have Mother's Milk and Huey coming in as the cavalry and that kind of I guess that kind of reinvigorates Billy's commitment to his team and stuff and so we'll see you know that's another arc we're going to see throughout the season yeah kind of going back and forth between should he quit or stay or quit stay you know exactly another scene that I liked was uh, you could see the hidden knives on Blackwater's back mm -hmm. when we see him on top of the roof you know, really close up as a, yeah. an overlook. We get to see more of his uniform in the daylight because normally everything is so dark. Yeah. You don't get to see what, you know, makes more of him. You yeah. Know? Another one I've got that we haven't talked about is we get the reveal of Mr. Marathon. Ashley says that A-Train was in the seven four years longer than Mr. Marathon. So I'm, I'm guessing that was the speedster 
in before the group, him. Before yeah. him, yeah. I thought that was interesting. And the last one I would have would be, you know, the, the Deep's little commercial for the Church of the Collective. Mm -hmm. I was laughing so hard <laughs> when he told the guy that is pushing on the girl to make out with him in the hallway. Hey, dude, that's just not cool and yeah you know, a complete opposite of what we know of the deep from season one when he did that that whole thing with annie Star right. you know starlight you know stormfront stating that she was part of the church at one point in front of annie a -train, at one a train no she's talking to a train a train yes yes yeah yeah she was talking and then they they just started letting just anyone in that was an interesting view because was that a, a lie or is just that her observation? No, we, we talked about this. We just we just talked about this a few minutes ago. She's that's yeah. her racism coming in when they started letting minorities in. Yeah, yeah, I know, I got that. Went. So it's not. I don't think there's anything else. But I think that's that's all it was. Oh, I mean, okay. I'm not understanding your because we like I said we just talked about this a few minutes ago. But yeah, that's what her whole thing was. Was it was when they started letting minorities into the church that she it wasn't it wasn't pure that she makes that that's that's how a train i think picks up on it because she said well it was no longer pure yeah he's you know? yeah yeah he he could tell she's a yeah he's exactly, a work exactly. <laughs> so i've just got a, a few real quick ones left here ashley kind of it's interesting that she kind of finds her spine a little bit when she's talking to a train you know when he's refusing to do the scene and she says well if you if you don't do the scene then if you do the scene, we'll give you your severance package and your retirement and, and all that. But if you don't do the scene, you'll get fired for breaking your morals clause and shooting hmm. up compound B and having a heart attack. You know, so she kind of has that moment where she can stand up to a train, but she can't really stand up to Homelander. We get our first look at that facility that uh, Starlight sees on Stormfront's computer there, Sage Grove. We're going to see in the next couple episodes and we see a quick of who we now know because we've watched the entire series is lamplighter there with his little lighter, his <laughs> titty committee lighter. So <laughs> we already talked about uh, some of this. Um, well, what about the, the scene between Maeve and the deep when she goes to meet him at the collective, the church? Yeah, that was, that was another thing that I thought was, it was interesting. We're going to, again, that's something I think we're going to see play out in future episodes that is interesting like he thinks she's there because she's supporting him or he's like, ready to come back into the, the yeah and she's like no none of these people can help you i can help you you know and, and then she's like she's like no you're a piece of crap and i'm not gonna he's like you think i'm a piece of crap and she was like yes i do <laughs> you know? exactly so but yeah i'm a, i think we find out in the next couple episodes that she's using him to protect elena i think Yes, yes, that's that was the whole point. She needed somebody to be like kind of backup for her to help out within that statement right. with, for right. Homelander or Stormlander, whatever you want to call him. <laughs> so we've got uh, <laughs> we've got a couple. I only have a couple of quotes here, so I'll sure. do my first one first, and then we'll go back and forth. I love when Homelander's watching the replay of the scene. He's like, "Girls, get it on." <laughs> instead of <laughs> instead of girls get it done and Ashley like tries to correct him and I just I chuckled every time I heard that he's like girls get it on <laughs> he's so he's just so immature and we've talked about his kind of stunted emotional growth and and stuff that he's that like he's gonna make this little double entendre joke thing yeah and he doesn't see it that way because he thinks mm -hmm. he's more important reminds me of somebody that we know um, but <laughs> I think it's funny though. So my first quote would be Homelander saying, so, ha, huh, they're all starving and someone has a cell phone. And that was after seeing the footage of him killing the supervillain. And I think it was Ethiopia. It was in Africa. Probably. Yeah, I could be I wrong. I don't think they said what, what country it was. Me from, neither. Yeah, yeah. But the fact that, you know, somebody had a cell phone camera. And, and then my, my only other one is is at the end there when Billy is talking to Stan Edgar and he says, roll the dice. I can't want to say that word. I reckon he'd be more popular than Megan. And I think he says Megan, Megan and Harry's little sprog uh, when he's talking about revealing uh, Homelander's kid to the uh, world. <laughs> I just uh, thought that was. <laughs> yeah. And next one I would have would be Billy saying. You're always like my canary, I suppose, to Huey on the phone. And that's literally what arouses Mother's Milk mm -hmm. at that point, because when Huey actually mentions it. Next one up would be, <laughs> if they want a lesbian Ken doll, they can find someone else. And that was <laughs> Elena when Maeve wants her to work on, you know, with the promotion that they have yeah. set forth with that. That way she can try and protect her from Homelander. Yeah, it's it's interesting what they're, they're showing kind of that... that um kind of what's the word i'm searching for that uh, 
where people think one thing and it's the only way they think a thing is mm. they're uh the whole the, the whole the, the lesbian couple has to be like a standardized couple where there's one is 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 clearly a cliched the, kind cliche, of cliche that's thank you that's the, the yeah like a cliched a, a cliched thing that they're trying to that yeah. they're like well one of you's got to be masculine one of you's got to be feminine you can't both be feminine well they know? mentioned ellen and portia de rossi so yeah. yeah that it's like oh well ellen looks like a butch and a guy and then Portia's right. so beautiful and it's really not the case honestly right right and then my last one would be huey stating this is the taffy room <laughs> and then billy's aunt and judy goes a more affordable alternative privatized care service. And then Billy goes, yeah, she's a dealer. <laughs> yeah. I thought that was interesting because Huey thinks she's this sweet, uh, you know, aunt type person then finds out that she's got this basement, uh, yeah. you know, whatever it is, medical or drug lab or whatever she's cooking up down there. <laughs> so no feedback this week. No, nope. No feedback this week. But as far as comic news, well, obviously everybody else out there in the world is doing their own virtual cons. So if you're interested in that sort of thing, uh, Wizard World has their own virtual cons that are going on weekend by weekend. So there's a bunch within November. I was just on one today for GalaxyCon and they had some of the guys from the Clerks movie on. So I got nice. to see... Brian O'Halloran, who played Dante, and I think Jeff Anderson was on. He was no, he was doing privatized, but you know they they had them all doing their own little panels, and they had their meet and greets and everything. So I recommend going out there and doing that if you can, because honestly, this is the time of the year where I generally go. This time of the year, usually I'm in Atlanta, and at, I think the last year this time I was at that was at Walker Stalker. So this year I was supposed to go to Fandemic, which would have been a nice uh, Walking Dead style one to go to and horror based one. But you know, we're not going to get that. So in, if you have that feeling that you need to do something convention wise, it's out there. It's out there virtually. You could actually pay. So it might, you know, pay for you to actually do that for the fact that you know, you don't have to worry about the cost of flying somewhere, paying hotel fees or anything. You put that in the idea of the cost of doing your one-on-one -on -one and then uh, whatever video conversation you have with a celebrity or even, you know, the autograph that you get. And it, it is worth it in some respects to me, you know, the, because we can't go anywhere, but it, it shows that we're, uh, like, able to do these things that we still love to do. So I, I recommend that. So that's the only news I would have as far as when it comes to comic book really related stuff. But with uh, regular news uh, this weekend, Sean Connery passed away at the age of 90. Yeah. Yeah. And I grew up on the Connery movies, all of them, all my life. And uh, the last movie he was in was, of all things, a comic book based style movie. The League of Extraordinary Gentlemen in 2003. And the the reason why he, he stopped acting was literally about that movie because they pushed that movie and it didn't really do well. And looking back, and I've watched that movie a few times, it wasn't that bad. It's just that critics had, had panned it and yeah. a lot of people didn't like it. And over time, it became almost like a cult classic for some people. Yeah, I don't remember it being horrible. It's been a while since I've watched it, but I, I do remember it did get... It, there was something else he was supposed to he was supposed to be in that he he canceled, he canceled on yeah to do do you remember what that movie was it was something that, that became huge wasn't it yeah i forgot what it was oh, okay i I'm, i know it was it was something that became ended up being huge and i'm sure that pissed him off so <laughs> So no comic book news, but we do have uh, some podcast recommendations. I'll give mine first. We have to go back. Lost Revisited, a joint podcast between the podcast network and this network, the Next Level Podcast Network, has returned with mm -hmm. their review of Lost Season 4. It was really great to get to hear Ben and Kristen again, and so I'm excited that they're back uh, doing their thing weekly, hopefully. And, uh, yeah, TV Podcast Industries is taking a little break before they start their next show, which I think is going to be Pennyworth or one, not one of the ones that I usually watch. So I'm I think it might be Pennyworth. Uh, I, Pennyworth I is see... coming out. I'm interested in the idea of the Pennyworth actual show itself. Yeah, I'm, I may I check it out. Just and to, check it out. Yeah, just to see what it's like. And, of course... Well, this could be comic-related news, but, you know, The Mandalorian Season 2 just came out, the mm -hmm. first episode, so how's podcast to go with Jason and his guests with their coverage on the show The Mandalorian Season 2 that they cover for, you know, and and how's podcast to go for Disney Plus's Mandalorian 
season two show. Yeah. So I so would check good. that, that out. That first episode was really, really good. Yeah, I, I really enjoyed it. And it was pretty funny waiting for Ben to get that information last night during Halloween. Oh. <laughs> and he didn't get to see the episode until we oh, were on a Zoom yeah. call and he watched it live. And he goes, I got to finish in the last three minutes. <laughs> and he goes, That's everybody great. keeps telling me the last three minutes are really important. I'm like, yes. He goes, yes. I was like, yes, yes. But I don't see, I'm not a, I'm not a Star Wars person so i don't know who that that guy is so for me the last it didn't it didn't affect me as much um seeing that, did that. you you saw the prequels to star wars right the the star star wars mm -hmm. prequels right yeah so you did see who Django fett was right right so that was boba fett i mean but I, what i'm saying here's okay you're not you're not getting my question how <laughs> do we know that just from the way he's dressed and we see the back of him and the weapon the face hand? his face it didn't show his face you could really all... you could see his face from the side oh i didn't i guess i didn't see it clearly enough it did not look to me like it was that that's who it was but okay i'll, yeah. I'll take your word for it that's that, that that's was, who it was. i i had watched it a few times like, i need to watch it I, I need to watch it again i haven't i haven't watched it but I, I didn't get a clear look at the face so okay now that makes sense of why everybody's so excited yep yep that was the whole point of the whole story of with him finding the guy with the uh Boba Fett, you know, the Mandalorian. Armor, yeah, no, armor. I got that. I got that. I just didn't know who that last, that, I didn't realize that was Boba, that was supposed to be Boba Fett yep. there at the end. Okay, cool. Well, for next week, uh, submit some feedback to us. You can hear us on any podcast player of choice that you have out there. Check out our website, which is panels to pixels .com. You can submit your theories and feedback on our Facebook page, which is facebook.com slash panels to pixels. You can also email us at panels to pixels one at gmail.com. That's panels to pixels one. The TO is spelled out right there in the middle and the number one at gmail.com. You can call us and leave us a voicemail at 845-350-2095. That's 845-350-2095. You can also catch us on YouTube on our panels to pixels podcast channel. Go there, subscribe, give us a thumbs up and check it out there. If that's the way you like to get your podcasts. Awesome. And where else can listeners hear us? Well, I can be found right here on Panels to Pixels, as well as sending out audio feedback to other podcasts that I love that my friends do. You can also hear me on my other podcast called Adrenaline Cinema Podcast on the Pyrocore Entertainment Network. And that podcast is basically about those action adventure movies, pure action movies, suspense films, and anything that gets your adrenaline going while watching the movies that we love. Panels to Pixels will remain on the Next Level Podcast Network, so stay tuned here and we will keep you up to date or just check out Pyrocore Entertainment's website, which would be pyrocoreentertainment.com. Very cool. And you can hear me right here, of course, on Panels to Pixels, and I send voicemails to various other podcasts of shows that I watch or friends of mine that are podcasting, so you can often hear my voice there as well. Exactly. So... Right now, we come to the end of our podcast, and I just want to thank everyone for listening. I'm Mark. And I'm Steve. And this was Panels to Pixels, and we'll see you on the next panel. Good night, everybody. Good night.